Assalamualaikum and hi. Today I will present about abstract before continuing to the calculation and conclusion. This experiment is focusing on the membrane separation process. Membrane separation process can be described by a feed stream that is divided into two which are retented and permeate. Where in retented is the part of feed that do not pass through the membrane but permeate can passing through. This experiment is implemented by using orange juice and three different type of fabric which is satin, polyester and cotton. The aim for this experiment is to study the relationship between different type of fabric and the weight permeate that being filtered by the fabric. Theoretically, the more of weight permeate, the clearer the orange juice product will be. Hence, it is crucial for the fabric membrane pores to be smaller in order to allowing only water to go in through the fabric. The overall result shows that the satin has the highest permeate weight and polyester has the least permeate weight. The result also shows that increasing the time, the permeate weight also increase. Hi, and a very good day. Today, I will explain more about membrane separation. Separation by using membrane are starting to become more relevant in process industry. Membrane separation process operate without heating and therefore use laser energy when compared to conventional separation, such as distillation, Supplementation or crystallization. In membrane separation, the feed stream is separated into two, permeate and retentate. Permeate is the fraction that is able to diffuse through the membrane, while the retentate is the remaining fraction that has not been transported through the membrane. The membrane acts as a semi permeable barrier and separate occur depends on the membrane ability to allow rate of movement of molecule. Whether between two liquid phase, two gas phase, or even liquid gas phase. Usually, the two fluid phase are miserable and the barrier prevent natural dynamic flow from occurring. So, from the figure, you can see that there are many type of uh, membrane process. We go to the first uh, membrane process, that is microfiltration. In microfiltration, Pressure driven flow through the membrane is used to separate micro sized particles from fluid. Usually, the particles are larger than those in ultrafiltration. Example of this type of membrane separation is separation of bacteria, pen pigment, yeast cell, and many more. Next, we go to the ultrafiltration. This process uses pressure to obtain molecule separation by using semi permeable polymeric membrane. This membrane differentiates based on molecular size, shape or chemical structure and separate high molecular weight solute and colloidal materials. Next is reverse osmosis. In this process, a membrane is placed between a solid solvent solution and a pure solvent that prevents the passage of a low molecular weight solute. The solvent diffuses into the solution by osmosis. In reverse osmosis, reverse pressure difference is imposed which causes the flow of solvent to be in reverse manner. Lastly is nanofiltration. This process is a recent improvement in the membrane separation process. It handles materials that are dissolved in a liquid. The separation between solid and solvent occurs by diffusion of solvent molecule through membrane material, driven by transmembrane pressure. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh So today, I will continue to present about literature review in membrane separation lab Before we go further into this topic, I would like to share a little knowledge about what is membrane separation My first point is membrane separation also known as filtration Membrane separation, also known as filtration, is a new technique in order to separate components that are dissolved in a liquid. My second point is, membrane separation is a very efficient, easiest and technique process 
can be very efficient, easiest and economical since there is no heating energy being supplied to it as in distillation column. The next point is membrane separation provide a privilege to the heat sensitive material. This process is actually provide a privilege to the heat sensitive material where they, where this material can be separated by their molecular weight without being affected by temperature. After that, membrane separation consists of porous with a thin dense layer. The function of this porous with a thin dense layer are basically to strain the undesired particles during the process. My last point is, membrane separation is a mechanical barrier. Membrane is actually a mechanical barrier that used to filter compound and only certain particle can pass through it. After that, we will proceed to process of membrane separation. As we can see in this diagram, membrane separation process consists of a feed stream then being filtered and be divided into two states, which is retentate and permeate. Retentate are basically all the unwanted materials or solute that has been filtered and does not pass through membrane from the solution while permeate is the collected solution without pulp. The flow of solution is perpendicular to the membrane surface and being pushed through membrane by pressure until it is separated. Now, we will look into the performance of membrane separation. Performance of this membrane separation can be categorized into three. The first one is size exclusion or it can be simplified by using pores where only small particles can pass through. The second point is using pore flow where the diameter of the pore similar to the molecular size. And the last one is solution diffusion into membrane. Next, we will discuss about type of membrane expression. There are a few types of membrane expression such as microfiltration, reverse osmosis, and nanofiltration that are commonly used in the industry. All of these membrane expression has their own pro and cons. So, we will take a look at each of these membrane separation one by one. On the previous slide, I already explained that there is a, there is a few types of membrane separation. So, we will proceed to go through one by one for the type of membrane separation. The first one is microfiltration. Microfiltration is a membrane with a pore size around 0.03 to 10 microns, molecular weight cut off greater than 1 million daltons, and low feed water operating pressure around 100 to 400 kilopascal. This material is able to filter sand, slip, clay, and some bacterial species if it is being combined with disinfection. Microfiltration also able to control microorganisms in water. Besides that, microfiltration are also applied during water treatment and natural synthetic organic matter. For an example, it can be used as a pretreatment of RO and NF, especially in reducing fouling. Now, we will proceed to the next part of type of membrane separation, which is reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis be able to remove nearly all inorganic contaminants from water such as radium, bacteria, and natural organic substance. Reverse, or reverse osmosis also can be more efficient when it is used in series with multiple units. Reverse osmosis also known due to its immediate operate 
without minimum break in period and low effluent concentration possible. The last type of membrane suppression is nanofiltration. Nanofiltration is a membrane with 0.001 microns and MC, MWCO of 1000 to 100,000 daltons. Due to its smaller pores, nitrofiltration are usually require high operation pressure which nearly 600 kPa to 1000 kPa. This type of membrane is, all, is able to retrain all cysts, bacteria, virus and humid materials. Nanofiltration membrane also remove alkalinity and hardness. Therefore, the filtrate water might be corrosive and need some softener. Nanofiltration requires more energy than microfiltration. So, we're going to proceed with the objectives of the experiment. This experiment was carried out to investigate the properties of three distinct types of textiles used as membrane materials. Aside from that, plotting graph or permeate wave versus time and comparing the efficiency of three various types of textiles in the system. So I'm going to pass it to my next one for the next session. Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Adli Fakri bin Yusof and I will be presenting about the schematic diagram for membrane separation lab. This process is quite similar as filtration process. Alright, the next part is the material and apparatus. The material used in this experiment are orange juice, plain water, tissue and three kinds of cloth which is cotton, satin and polyester. Next is the apparatus used in this experiment which is the plastic bottle, a cup, a weighing scale, a stopwatch, and a spoon. My name is Arif and now we will proceed with the video demonstration. First up we have its preparation. Here we trace a shape using a pencil and a ruler to make it easier for us to cut it into a manageable size. As you can see here we have a quite various type of fabric. The pink in color with the pattern is actually cotton, next to it are satin, and the far right here we have in grey are polyester. Okay, here is the first run of the experiment itself. It starts with cutting water bottle in half, as you can see there, and using the top part of the water bottle with the cap uh, as a funnel. And then next, we create a table we draw a table uh, to record the initial weight of the sample, initial weight of the sample with water, and the final weight of sample plus water. All of this weight recorded are in grams. And then, as you can see here, our sample that we use is orange juice. And this is the part where we prepare three samples of orange juice mixed with water uh, at the ratio of one to one. To be specific, the ratio of 1 to 1 is actually 50 grams of orange juice and 50 grams of water. So this mixture here, as you can see, we will weight it and record every mass of the sample and water for each fabric respectively. Uh, this is the part where we place a cotton fabric and attached it inside the final part of the water bottle. We also secured it with rubber band to make sure that it's not moving around. Uh, before we proceed, we actually have to create a table of weight of the sample and water and also its time. So here, we after we set up the material and apparatus shown here, we pour all of the orange juice inside and start the time, where we will then record the weighing scale value of the filtration for every 20 seconds as interval for 5 minutes. So here we will have 15 sets of data and this is the final pop left on the fabric. Doesn't look very appetizing. This is the second round of the experiment uh, where, where we will use um, satin and the same procedure as before. As previously mentioned, 
where we will record its weight for every 20 seconds interval for 5 minutes. We will also have 15 cents of data. So as you can see here, this is the pop left at, at the fabric and this is the filtered sample mixture. This is the third run of the experiment where we use polyester as the fabric instead of satin or cotton. As you can see here, it is quite slow compared to other two, uh, but all of the procedure are the same where we will record the weight for 20 seconds of interval for 5 minutes. This is the orange juice mixture filtered and this is the pop left on the fabric. Here is the summary of procedure that have been explained in the video demonstration earlier. Next, I will pass this presentation to my friend. This is the result obtained during the experiment. It can be seen that the weight of the sample for satin after 300 seconds is the highest compared to the others. This is the second part of the result which is the table for weight of sample before and after the experiment. The permeate mass flux is obtained from the calculation part. The last part of the result is the graph of permeate weight versus the time. It can be seen that the satin fabric has the highest value at the first 20 seconds and at the end of the experiment. Okay, next I will present about the calculation in this experiment. In this calculation, we need to find two important criteria in order to proceed for plotting the graph, which is mass of permeate and mass flow rate of permeate. Okay, for the first calculation, mass of permeate is equal to final weight of sample plus water. In this experiment, mass of permeate obtained for cotton is 90.74 satin 94.69 and polyester 90.73. Second, we proceed to finding mass flow rate of permeate which is equal to permeate mass flux. For the permeate mass flux, the equation is mass of permeate over the time. Mass of permeate we obtain from the earlier calculation. In this case, permeate mass flux is for the cotton is 0 0.3025 gram per second. So guys, we're going to proceed with our next uh, section, which is the discussion. The purpose of this experiment is to investigate the relationship between permeate mass and separation time. The permeability and the characteristics of three distinct types of textiles are the major focus of this research. Cotton, satin, and polyester are the materials utilized in this experiment. The equipment for this experiment is made from an empty water bottle with an even cross-sectional area and a final made from the bottle mouth. So, this is the tabulated data which is obtained from the uh, experiment that has been done before. So, I'm going to skip it because my friend has explained it uh, for a previous session. So, after this data is targeted, permeate mass flux, which is uh, the unit is gram per second, for every sample is calculated. Cotton is calculated to have permeate mass flux of 0 0.3025 gram per second, and then satin sample has permeate mass flux of 0 0.3156 gram per second, and lastly we have polyester sample which has permeate mass flux of 0 0.3024 gram per second. According to the estimated results, Satin had the greatest permeate mass flux of uh, which is 0 0.3156 gram per second, indicating that the liquid mixture was able to flow through the Satin fabric, indicating that it was the clear sample resulting in the fastest rate of separation. This could be uh, due to this membrane is highly permeable. This is because the positive Satin is relatively uh, bigger than cotton and polyester. Next, we have the second greatest permeate mass flux, which is for cotton, which is 0 0.3025 gram per second, indicating that the liquid mixture can pass through cotton fabric better than polyester fabric. This is also indicate that higher mass flow rates occur at cotton, 
during the separation process in compared to the polyester because it is uh, it is uh, so we're going to discuss about the polyester one uh, because the membrane porosity is so tiny a blockage at the pore which is poly polyester might be the cause of solutions inability to pass through this is the positive side of the membrane uh, we, we, we discuss about the polyester right now since it enables for a pure permeate to be generated because even tiny particles are trapped at the membrane pores. So, we go to the next slide. We have uh, a photograph of graph of permeate versus time. The permeability of the fabric used in this experiment may be seen in graph 1 in the results. Satin has the greatest permeability of the all fabrics chosen as shown in this graph. So we're going to prove it right now. Yes, as you can see, the satin has the greatest permeability. And then the second one is the cotton. Cotton has the second highest permeability since its curve is greater than polyester. So we're going to prove it again. So it, uh, uh, the, the cotton curve is greater than polyester. So yes, the the cotton curve is greater than the polyester one so we have the last one the sample for the lowest permeability which is polyester this one is this that polyester is the fabric to use when the materials to be separated is made up of extremely tiny molecules so we're going to proceed uh, with the next section which is the uh, mistake because this experiment is carried out with self good apparatus, certain mistakes may arise throughout the course of this experiment. To begin with, uh, the watermelon pulps. The, water, the watermelon samples used in this experiment may include pulps that are unable to flow through the fabric samples. And there is a good chance that the pulp collected at the bottom of the fabric samples uh, showing the, uh, slowing the liquid samples penetration. And then we, uh, we have the second mistake, which is the fabric thickness. The thickness of the fabric used is also important since because uh, the fabric samples were received from various resources. Uh, so, it is difficult to obtain diverse fabric materials with the same thickness, which might cause the penetration to deviate from its ideal result. So, what, I'm, what, uh, what I mean from the ideal result is when the experiment is done with the same thickness of fabric. So lastly, we have the inaccurate data. Uh, it is because uh, the data is not really accurate as the results were recorded based on only first time of the experiment, which makes sense if the data tabulated may consist of human errors, such as uh, the delay of recorded time for certain procedure. So we're going to the last one, the last one, uh, the last part of this discussion is the sustainability while conducting this experiment. Some sustainability considerations were made as all of the bottles used was used water, water, water bottle which will be disposed of uh, appropriately. The bottles may also may be used by uh, repurposing them as flower vas va uh, vases and other things. And the textiles used in this project can be utilized for cleaning. That's all from the discussion part. I'm going to pass it to my friend. Thank you. Okay, now I will present about the conclusion in this experiment. At the end of this experiment, all the characteristics of four types of membranes were identified. It can be concluded that satin cloth has the highest mass of permeate of orange juice and polyester has the least amount of permeate. Based on the weight data for each membrane shows that the satin cloth was identified being fastest in separation process and most permeable followed with cotton and polyester. From the result, it is clear clearly shows that the permeate weight are gradually increased as the time of the process increase. The weight of the collet permeate also proportional with the collet retented from orange juice. Furthermore, each membrane displays the same outlet 
designed with a varying weight of the outlet. The smaller the pore size of membrane will yield the purer permeate from the solution. At the end, the objective of the experiment achieved in identifying the characteristic of the membrane in the separation process. In the next slide, we will see uh, a few recommendations about this experiment. There are some recommendations throughout this experiment. In order to obtain best result, there are few recommendations that can be made for improvement through the experiment. First, uh, the student must make sure the weighing balance must be 10 to 0 every time changing the sample collection. Then, students should be alert and focused when taking the reading on the weighing scale because the sample is continu continuously go out and the weight will change through time. Other than that, students should be alert with the significant figures for the weighing balance in order to get accurate data. In order to get precise results, students should take the reading at least three times to get the average value for every trial. The student also need to conduct the experiment with proper personal protective equipment PPE, in order to minimize the risk throughout the experiment. Lastly, students should study and understand the experiment procedure from the lab manual to ensure the experiment runs smoothly.